22nd, 3D print table. Let's draw this out. Basically, that's what it's going to be. The platform and the table surface area. Now, these dimensions are 30 by 30 by 24. That is the surface area. I was thinking of bringing the platform in one inch so I would have a contour around the whole table of one inch so to do so to do so to bring it inside one inch and the sideboards will not be flush with the legs they're going to be in about a quarter of an inch to give it some definition So the platform itself something like this. the other leg in the corner here. Uh, it's just a rough sketch. I'm, I'm drawing this fast, so it, it may not appear. So, I'm just going to put dowel pins here. Um, the piece here 
will look something like this. Right? And this is uh, 270, or that angle is 90 degrees. So the piece looks like that. The corner post would be in here as such. And I put a screw here, and two screws here, two screws here. And these are my sideboards. So uh, when everything's tight, Okay, and everything's tight together. When I put screws here and tighten down on the center screw here, it's going to pull the post into the two sides, and there's two dowels. Will it, and it will prevent it from from a, a twisting uh, through certain loads or weight or whatever is on the table, and you won't be able to wiggle the legs from side to side like this because the pins will be holding everything intact, giving it more strength and rigidity. So basically that's the plan. So let's get started. surface uh, I marked it top and bottom uh, this side was edged uh, this side was edged and this one went through the table saw uh, I had actually made them all the same width okay so now I got to determine what length I want these and um, I have 30 length, or actually I have 31, 31 by 23 and a half. So to leave a border of one inch around the table, 31 minus 2. 29 so bang on these will be 29 but I must include a leg and to do so take the shorter pieces and this will be the sides and these longer pieces will be the front and back so to get the proper measurement Actually, sorry for the, uh, the 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 movement there. See, I created a recess. So now, when you're doing, when you're actually doing furniture, you want to make sure you can put stain and varnish and clear coat or whatever you're putting on it, uh, ver uh, vanadium or verandum which is uh, uh, eliminates the sanding sealer and the uh, uh, the shell material the, uh, the varnish 
it's all in one, it's just a spray can, right? But you gotta take this piece, once it's already been assembled and dismantled, stain, clear coat, and then you assemble it. But the same thing happened to these pieces. What happens is you're sealing in whatever moisture is in the wood so it doesn't crack anymore or rot or and it keeps its shape because it's not losing humidity uh, which actually creates when you see a piece of wood starting to bow or something it might be absorbing in, uh, moisture or releasing moisture on one surface creating uh, one surface to be elongated and you want the other one getting shorter so you get bows and cracks and but if you can do every surface on your pieces you eliminate that from happening so this is what the corner is going to look like and I'm going to leave a quarter of an inch from here to here and now I can figure out the measurements of the side pieces and the front and back pieces the process for all the legs. I got which material I want the public to see and what I don't want them to see. That's going to be apparent but it's going to be stained. It is the best corner, best surface for that corner. Quarter. for the other two. Now that I've marked all the corners, okay, what I can do is pretend this is my the bottom of my top of my table and just measure an inch going outwards here. Okay. And oh I didn't think that went through one. Huh? Just a second. Oh, 
from inch beyond. Okay, and I said I wanted um, I had 31, so I want 30. 30 total. And from that total, this will give me the length of my side. So I need two sides of that length. do is cut off these pieces or put the best surface on the outside. I'm just going to take the best of the board to make my side or my front I should say. And the front is, and to get a proper measurement you should always use, never trust the tang at the end of the tape. It might be off by a, a sixteenth or an eighth. Or I always start at a known number. In this case I'm using ten. So uh, thirty-five and 11 sixteenths minus 10 would be 25 and 11 sixteenths. Yep. So I'm going to cut two pieces of that length. Now I've got to find the side length. So I'll do the same thing. Past it one inch. And I have twenty three and a half. So twenty three and a half. one or minus two okay is twenty one and a half. This is going to be total length that I need for my sides. from a known number, accurate number, 18 and a quarter. And those are going to be the length of my side piece. You need a square, a square, uh, square corners to work off of. So I'm just going to square every board one good side. Oh, a little bit of splitting. You can counter that splitting by actually. support on the back side of it. To make sure your boards are the same length, 
what you do is you cut both of them at the same time. That way you know you got the same length. It sounds funny, but you could be off by just a smidgen. smallest piece which is three quarters of an inch so I should be able to put in a dowel which is about three eighths of an inch here and here and if you're putting in a dowel you want it to be something solid you could make it a piece of steel if you can if you have a piece of steel three eighths of an inch and uh, or um, I'm guessing a piece of hardwood um, same material oak is, actually birch might be better because oak is kind of porous so at 3 8 it may not have 3 8 strength that birch will so I'm going to use a 3 8 birch um, if I can't find a dowel 3 8 birch I'm going to make one in the lathe yeah good thing I have a lathe No, I don't have one, so I gotta make one. Um, what I'm gonna do is actually dial in the piece. It's not too fussy, but you could get it wrong, <laughs> right? Not quite sure where to get my measurement from.
Now, as far as speeds and feeds, it's wood. It's not that fussy. I just don't know it off the top of my head right now. So I'm just going to use a... Uh, See, if it was steel or let's say aluminium and you're drilling it, what you want to go do is is uh, four times uh, aluminium, which is 100, which is cutting surface speed. So that's 400 divided by the diameter, which would be, in this case, 5 eighths. And whatever number you get is what you should fit your dial. to the lathe I don't mean to uh, give you motion sickness I got a few dial pins yeah now these dial pins like I said earlier is what's gonna join these two pieces together as such so I'm going to drill some holes, make myself a jig fixture to make sure that I always get the holes in the same spot. And then I'm going to drill them. Now to, uh, to actually uh, put the holes for the dowels, I've uh, clamped a piece of uh, plywood on my drill press and I've assured myself that all these holes that I make for the dowels will actually all be the same and line up in doing so. Because all I have to do is go like this and then put my piece of wood and then go like this to do the other side. So all my lines, all my, my dowels will line up with my boards. Okay. So I've made a mark and I've got to set my dent. So about here.
uh, put the holes in these boards at the same exact distance and everything I'm going to make a jig which is a piece of a uh, piece of plywood here on this side and I'm going to screw it together to get a 90 degree angle then I'm going to actually uh, center the holes at the right distance and I'm going to use a C clamp to hold the jig there and I'm going to drill it with a stop I don't have a, 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 a drill press big enough to hold a board straight up like this Right. There's no way I can fit that in that and clamp it in there. There's just not enough distance. So I'm going to have to do it by hand. But if I have a jig, I have a greater chance of success of getting it right where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to build the jig first. Now, like I said, I'm going to fasten these two boards together as such. And when I go to drill my bore here, I'm just going to punch two holes where they're supposed to go in the end of my bores. And that way I'll always get the same measurement. This is a Makita countersink tool. You draw, if you have a number 8 bolt or screw, you get a number 8 bit. And this is a 1 8 I believe. It's just the inner diameter of the thread. It's not the outer, it's the inner diameter. holes right where they're supposed to be it's always good to double check well, let's start off with the first one into and I screw into the sides and that's what's going to keep that corner strengthened everything's going to be compressed if the leg pulls in and I'm holding on to the sides that means I'm pulling the leg into the dowel pins so everything should be tight okay so
So now, now that I've cut my um, dowel, dowel pins for the corners, I gotta make a a corner block. So when I put this in the corner here, these are 45s. Okay. I'm going to pierce a hole here, 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 and here, and in the middle. I've got one inch number eight screws that are going to go here and here, and they're going to hold. that little uh, board to the side boards and the front boards and back boards and then that number 10 2 inch screws that are going to go in the middle here and they're going to pull the leg into the side boards making that joint very stiff and tight Now, I've used my uh, previous jig to uh, drill the dowel pin holes and I just put some spacers here so I could clear the drill bit without hitting to the table and I'm going to drill these holes, all I have to do is flip the block over, they all line up and I've set the depth to which I want those holes to go to.
to debt yet because I don't want to go through my sides, but they're just, the starter hole is there, so all I have to do is drill it to debt that I want to make sure that I don't go through my sideboard. Now I'm going to repeat this for all four corners. Yeah, it's time for the uh, surface preparation. And uh, I uh, used to use orbital sanders just with my hands, but I found that prolonged exposure to heavy vibrations actually, after a while, create a high hypersensitivity in your fingers, ringing. It's not. Um, you don't think about that until it starts the conditions and the, the stuff starts happening to you, right? But with a nice thick pair of, of leather gloves, most of the vibration is absorbed in the glove. And uh, a respiratory mask is not a bad idea either. I know it has a dust uh, catcher, but for the amount of sending I'm going to be doing, it's going to make some dust. So I'm not taking any chances. I think that's all I'm going to do is just break the edges so don't cut yourself when you're handling the furniture. And uh, I'm not going to sand the inside because it's useless. And I'm not going to sand the top because it's useless. These are the only visual areas. And I'm going to sand the interior edges so a person doesn't cut their hands when they're handling the wood. And that's it. I don't touch the ends. So I'm going to do that for all the pieces till I'm done. I'm going to do that for all the pieces till I'm done. Then I'm going to stain it. It's a uh, Sedona red from Sequoia or Sedona red 222 from Minwax. Really nice red for oak. You'll get to see it when it's done. Yeah, I'm going to be using, uh, I don't know if you can see it, it's Sedona Red 222 from Minwax, wood finish stains. And this is the appearance. That's what it looks like wet. And I've actually hung the boards up on the garage door uh, hinge or the garage door rail.
times gain, once you've done soaking it in, you should do a sweep all the way through so it spreads out evenly. You don't want blotches. Thank you.